uh, Joshua talked about Fosh a little bit earlier. You got a little bit of a hint of this, but um, uh, Fosh is a, a gnome based Wayland shell and compositor. So uh, shells very different than than what you think uh, in terms of you know bash shell and things like that. It's uh, got a completely different meaning in the Wayland world. Um, and this is something that Joshua started with Metafosh and, and I've been collaborating with him ever since. Um, so we're gonna talk about what is Fosh uh, pretty quickly and then a bunch of screenshots, a little bit about what works and what doesn't, um, a little bit about whether it can replace uh, Sato and Matchbox and then some next steps. And I've actually got a live demo ready to go as well. Um, I'm going to skip over. I just put those the abstract and description in there from uh, my submission. Uh, the actual layer that we're using is um, on GitHub that uh, Joshua already pointed to earlier. And this is also where you can see the signs of uh, continuous integration. And obviously, he gave a much more thorough talk about that earlier. So just in a nutshell, what is FOSH? So it's a phone shell is what FOSH itself stands for. And then there's actually a, a sibling uh, package called FOC, um, which is the phone compositor for Wayland. And what is cool about it is that it just uses GNOME and GTK APIs and, and Dbus, right? So it's system D and GNOME and, and GTK ready. And it doesn't need um, any kind of uh, Cute or any other um, possibly license burdened um, libraries. Uh, so in this stack, which I just grabbed from uh, one of the maintainers of Fosh itself, the links in the upper right hand corner, uh, all the blue things are basically just standard GNOME stack, right? Or, or um, Linux stack. So at the bottom of this, we should probably put Wayland um as well and then the white items are things that are specifically uh authored by the the fosh community and specific to uh what fosh is trying to do so i want to highlight the fact that it is phone shell right it is phone in the, in the the name and so it was very much geared towards a handset um so Squeakboard is a on-screen keyboard, and Feedback D is like for haptic um, and other kinds of you know feedback mechanisms that you would normally have in a handset. Uh, because these items are uh, libraries that are linked into Fosh and Fock when you build it, the, they they need to be there um, even if you aren't necessarily using them. Well, Squeakboard's standalone, but um, so. It's pretty simple what we needed to do. There's obviously obviously some recipes that we had to add into the layer, but basically what we really needed is just this package group, Fosh Essential. Um, and all it does is uh, brings in GNOME Control Center, which we need for um, some of the feedback that's uh, in the interface, and I'll, I'll kind of point that out, and I'll, I'll let Joshua talk about that maybe a little bit more um, as we go along. Um, and then we've got Fock and Fosh. So Fosh actually depends on Fock, so we don't really actually have to have it here, but it's nice to see it explicitly. Uh, Fosh itself depends on Feedback D, so it's it's built in as a library. And then Squeakboard, we've added uh, to have an on-screen keyboard. Uh, and then also it needs the locale data from glibc. Um, otherwise, it, it has some funky behavior. Uh, and then we've got core image Fosh. This is an attempt at a Sato clone. So, you know, Sato was uh, was created by Open Hand, which was you know kind of the origin of uh, Pocky and Yakka project way back in the day. Um, and so. This is what we currently use as our standard uh, GUI build on the auto builder that exercises a lot of different packages and a lot more than just core image minimal, for instance. Um, so this is just an attempt at kind of mimicking that behavior. 
It's not as complicated as the Coramage Sato recipe, uh, but all we're doing is depending on the package group uh, or installing the package group Flash Essential, the GTK Plus demo, um, Epiphany, the web browser, the games from Puzzles, um, LeafPad, and so on. So pretty straightforward. Um, and if you are building with X11, which I believe currently Flash requires um, X Wayland, um, it's going to build in X Wayland and the Matchbox terminal. Then we also have another much more um, in progress image, and this is uh, attempting to be just pure GNOME apps, or another way of saying it is, is what the pure OS um, and purism, the, the actual handset manufacturer, what they, are, what they are showing is basically just these pure GNOME apps. So in this case, we, we still bring in this package group, Flash Essential and Epiphany, the web browser. Um, but also we grab package group GNOME apps from uh, MetaGNOME in MetaOpen Embedded Layer. In this case, I didn't put in a Matchbox terminal. We instead are going to use the GNOME terminal, which is built into package group GNOME apps. Uh, GNOME needs a little bit more memory. So if you look at the, the QB mem at the end here, um, it turns out that the GNOME uh, instance needed a little bit more, more memory. Uh, so here's some screenshots uh, just of the QMU uh, setup or the QMU instance running. So when you first boot, uh, what you'll see is the lock screen. So uh, it gives you the time and the date, and then uh, very similar to your you know, handset, your, your phone behavior, you, you just swipe up to, um, to get past this lock screen. And then it takes you to a pin entry screen. So again, this is designed to be for a phone. And so this is currently numeric only for the, and this is your password. So um, we do set a password in the builds that, uh, that Joshua was talking about earlier. And it's one, two, three, four is what the passcode is. Uh, so once you enter that in, then you can unlock it. And the first thing you'll see then is this uh, app thumbnail view. And what this has is, is the, the blue globe is the Epiphany um, logo. And then uh, it's showing the um, G settings uh, as well. And then there, you know, at the bottom, it might be hard to read on, on the screen because it's probably pixelated. It says show all apps. And what this is showing the difference of is uh, apps which are specifically geared towards being mobile friendly. And there's a, a very opinionated um, uh, variable that is set for that right now, which is uh, based on purism. Um, and so Epiphany is the one which is above the line and that shows you that it's, uh, it's mobile friendly and below the line is things that aren't mobile friendly. So once we click on that show all apps, now we'll see all of the things that you would normally see in the core image Sato. So all of the pixel um, or puzzle games and extensions and, and leaf pad and all these other things. Um, one of the things you'll notice though, is that this is going down off the bottom of the screen and we don't really have like the tabbed interface that Sato and Match Matchbox provides. So we'll talk about that more later. Uh, up at the top, there was a, a, a top panel that comes down if you, uh, click on it and that shows you you know your your uh, cell tower signal and your Wi-Fi signal and things like that um, again this is, is based on a hand handset model uh, there's also a power menu icon up in the upper right that lets you uh, lock the screen or re restart or power off very much like a normal gnome um, desktop situation uh, and just like GNOME Desktop, you actually have a desktop background. So um, if you don't have an app actually active, you, you'll see whatever background you've chosen. This is the default. And here's a view of what the LeafPad um, editor would look like. Um, so it goes kind of full screen. And then we've got the squeak board um, uh, keyboard put in. There's an icon on the lower right-hand corner, which is 
uh, where you click on that to actually bring up the squeak board keyboard. It, it, it uh, comes in and out only based on your, your clicking on that, that icon. Uh, just looking at a couple of the apps, uh, if we look at the background settings view or the background settings uh, application um, or the settings application with the background settings view, you can see uh, these are the built in uh, options that came from the GNOME background settings or background, GNOME backgrounds, I think is the, the package name anyway. Um, if we run Matchbox Terminal, uh, it gives you a full screen terminal view. Uh, I realize the font's really small uh, and it's just your typical behavior. And again, you could bring up squeak board if you wanted to have a, a keyboard on screen. Uh, we've got file roller to show you the contents of your, your files. Uh, we've got media player to allow you to play uh, media items. And here's what one of the puzzles would look like uh, when it's being run. So you'll kind of notice that it basically always runs all the applications as full screen, which is probably what you expect from a, a phone, but might have implications for other things. Um, so uh, that was QMU uh, ARM or QMU x86-64. So can it run on my Raspberry Pi? And the answer is yes. And now I'm going to attempt the gods by uh, the demo gods by switching my modes here. And I'm going to reboot my Raspberry Pi. So this is uh, going through a Elgato uh, HDMI to USB capture device. Which it's, it's just starting to boot. Yep, looks good. I see it. So there's your uh, splash screen, thanks to Meta Raspberry Pi layer. So it's been a little slower than normal today for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, Uh, and I just realized I don't know. It's harder for me to see what my mouse is doing. So sorry here. Um, well, maybe this isn't going to work as well as, as I was hoping. Um, my other device, which crashed uh, Zoom really badly, also let me uh, feed this through to uh, to a second monitor, um, but all right, well, I'm gonna give up on that. Um, oh, there it goes. Well, anyway, it's gonna be too hard for me to actually do this because the screen's so small. Um, so let me stop trying to do that valiant effort. Uh, slightly different uh, views on that case because the, um, that image is actually running uh, the GNOME uh, desktop. So there's a few issues with the GNOME apps right now. Uh, they're not quite working as expected. So that leads into what works and what doesn't. Um, so most GNOME uh, and GTK type apps show on the launch screen. So you know the, the app icon or logo works just fine. Uh, Matchbox Terminal works as expected. Um, it works really well on the supported GPUs, right? So, you know, with Meta, Meta Raspberry Pi and uh, the hardware acceleration, everything works quite nicely. It looked a little sluggish in, in this view, but it's actually not sluggish at all um, in, in reality. It was slightly sluggish on x86 um, QMU. What's not working so great, and this is not an exhaustive list. Um, we've mostly done a lot of work trying to get the CI working and and get the GNOME stack and things like that working and not so much making sure that FOSH itself is, is all the way there. Um, it's really awkward that GNOME calculator launches full screen. So you end up seeing like, you know, normally you would expect to see the keypad be kind of a, a square grid and it's a weird squashed rectangular grid. Um, with the GNOME apps, some things launch and they don't 
they don't actually show up. You just see that, that background screen. So uh, known terminal, we still haven't quite figured it out. We're pretty sure it's a locales issue, but we haven't quite gotten that working yet. Um, some of the GTK apps like Media Player actually took quite a while to, to come up on at least the Kia Mi X86 instance. Um, it eventually did show up. Um, and like the GTK print editor uh, also had the same kind of response. Um, there's something very odd about the um, the mouse cursor in, in QME. So it needs a calibration and we'll have to figure out what that is. And, and hopefully that'll be something that's standard. So it's a really awkward experience if you're running it with QME, which is why I didn't try to live demo that. Uh, but obviously live demoing on the Raspberry Pi was hard to do on the tiny little view I had. Um, so can it, can Fosh replace Sato and Matchbox? Well, yeah, most, most apps work or almost work. So it's probably just a little bit of tweaking. I'm a little concerned about the fact that it doesn't have the concept of multiple tabs um, of apps. So you, as you saw in the, the Sato kind of clone view, it just scrolls off the bottom of the screen. And the reason that's a concern is that for uh, CI automation, you know, GUI automation, uh, it might be really hard to control that and, and make things work. Um, there's definitely going to need to be some migration from MetaNome into OE Core if we're going to make this be a, a core replacement. Uh, I think that it, the promise is this is really well maintained by upstream Debian and GNOME. Uh, and it's more likely to be able to stay up to date uh, with new versions of GTK and things like that, right? So we were on GTK2 for Matchbox and then we, we ported it to GTK3. Now GTK4 is out. We're not ported to that yet. Um, also adding new features and fixes and bugs and things like that is probably going to be um, more eyeballs on it, more people developing it compared to our own Sato and Matchbox. Another option might be to port Sato and Matchbox to Wayland. Uh, we've talked about that as well. Um, so what are the next steps? Uh, there's actually a configuration to try to figure out how to get rid of the pin and, and have it actually just log in automatically. It, it just wasn't something I had the time to, to completely figure out before uh, this talk. Um, we do need to understand what makes the GNOME apps more mobile friendly, especially, or the GTK apps. Like I said, the, the, the calculator is really awkward. It doesn't look right. Um, and then try to figure out what's going on with these apps that are failing to launch completely. Uh, also in the OE, uh, OE meeting on Friday, we're, we'll talk about this again. And we need to talk a little bit about, about what are the things that would need to move into core uh, in, in terms of support. So I want to thank Purism, first of all, because they open sourced this uh, from the beginning, but they've also upstreamed it into the normal GNOME uh, GitLab. So it's in GitLab uh, GNOME or World Fosh. So that's where all their, their different apps are. Um, we really want to thank all the open embedded contributors, especially very recently, have been working on the GNOME stack. It's been uh, a bit of a slog. Uh, want to thank Alex Canavan and Ross Burton for a lot of encouragement and advice about this. And obviously my collaborator, Josh, uh, Joshua Watt for, for really getting the ball rolling on this stuff. Um, so that's, that's it. I'll take any questions or whatever now and get myself back to where I can see things. <laughs>